Okay, welcome to our lecture online, and here again, it looks like we have a quadratic equation. Here we have cosine square theta, cosine of theta, and cosine to the zero power. So we're going to make a substitution to x to make it into an algebraic equation, solve for x, and then convert back to the cosine of theta. So let x equal the cosine of theta, and let's see what the equation looks like now. So we end up with 2x squared minus 7x plus 3 equals 0. Let's see if we can solve this equation for x. We can probably factor that, so if we can, it should look like this. So we end up with a 2x and an x. Hmm, it looks like we're going to have two negative signs because if this is negative and that's positive, that needs to be negative and negative, and it can only be 3 and 1. And since we need a 7 here, that means we need the 3 over there because 2 times 3 is 6, and we need the 1 over there. 1 times 1 is 1, 6 plus 1 is 7, so that looks correct. Now we have two binomials multiplied together that gives us zero. Anytime you multiply two things and get zero, that means either one or the other must be zero, which means x minus 3 must equal zero, or 2x minus 1 must equal zero, which means that x is equal to 3, or 2x equals 1, or x equals 1 half. And here we have x equals 3, and x equals one half. All right, so now we can go ahead and substitute back in. So now we let x equal the cosine of theta, which means that the cosine of theta is equal to three, or the cosine of theta equals one half. Well, right away, here we realize we have a problem. There's no such thing as an angle that when I take the cosine of it, I have a value that's greater than one or less than negative 1, because the bounds here has to be plus 1 and negative 1 in the unit circle, which means there's no solution to that. So here we simply say there's no solution for this particular option. But here we do have a solution, because x can be equal, or I should say the cosine of theta can equal 1 half. Let's draw the unit circle there. So if we draw the unit circle, we have the y-axis, we have the x-axis, and remember that the cosine of the angle is equivalent to the x value of a point on the unit circle. And so if we go up here, we can say, hmm, at this point, this here, this value right here is equal to 1 half. And right down here, this value right here would be equal to 1 half. So when we take the cosine of this angle theta here, or cosine of this angle minus theta right there in that direction, we can see that we'll get a value in the x direction equal to one half. So there must be two possible answers so that when the cosine of theta will then equal to one half. Well, of course, here we can see that this must be 60 degrees. When the theta is 60 degrees, the cosine of 60 is one half. And of course, minus 60 degrees, we also get the value of the cosine of that angle equal to one half. But of course, we don't want a negative angle. We want an angle between zero and 360 degrees which means that this is equal to 360 degrees minus 60 degrees, which is 300 degrees. That means there's two possible answers that when we take the cosine of those angles, we get equal to 1 half, which means theta can equal to 60 degrees or theta can equal to 300 degrees. Converting that to radians, 60 degrees, of course, is pi divided by 3, and 300 degrees is 2 pi minus pi divided by 3, and so those would be the two possible answers that make this equation come out right. We don't have any solution for that part of the equation. Well, I was reminded by my assistant, who by the way has a degree in mathematics, that you can actually check these answers, and of course that's true, and it's always a good idea to do that. If you take these answers and plug them back in the original equation, the left side should equal the right side if we did this correctly. So let's do that. Let's do that for at least one of the answers. We call that a check. All right, so if you plug in, let's say, pi over 3, which is equal to 60 degrees, into our equation right here, what do we get? So 2 times the cosine of 60 degrees quantity squared minus 7 times the cosine of 60 degrees plus 3 equals 0. Well, question mark, is that indeed correct? Let's find out. What is the cosine of 60 degrees? Well, that's equal to 1 half, so this becomes 2 times one half squared minus seven times one half plus three is that indeed equal to zero so one one half squared is one quarter times two is one half so one half 
minus 3.5 plus 3 is that indeed equal to 0 and sure enough because minus 3 and a half plus 3 is minus a half plus a half yes 0 equals 0 and it is correct so at least that answer is correct and we can of course do the same with the other answer but at this point I'm pretty sure the other answer is correct as well so that's how we do that